Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Victoria Chen, and today I'm really excited to talk to you about this topic uh, called Approaching Product Vision as Art. Um, this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart because um, I started out growing up very much as an um, kind of as an artist, um, doing a lot of art, uh, then studying architecture in college. And what really drew me to um, product development and being a product manager is the opportunity to um, take some of those elements of art and design um, and pulling that into product vision, which then um, gets manifested in uh, the user experience through a digital product. So I'm really excited to dive into that today and provide a lot of examples. Uh, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm a PM at Stitch Fix, a product manager. Um, these are some of uh, some things that I've created in the past. Uh, I've designed a table, uh, grew up doing a lot of oil painting and some digital art more recently. Um, also studied architecture uh, more as a minor in college, but um, definitely very passionate about that. So specifically, um, when I say art, like what do I mean by that uh, in the context of today? Um, so when I think about art, I think about um, uh, something that is more free of constraints. So more of a blank canvas uh, kind of creation. And usually it starts with an idea, um, kind of a feeling that uh, you want the audience to experience or an idea. Um, and it's, it's a little bit less practical. It's more about conveying that, um, that kind of intangible um, feeling uh, that's associated with the art. And then the artist goes through the process of thinking about like, how do I convey this feeling or this, um, this uh, kind of picture in the user's head? Um, like there's a lot of ways to go about doing that. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about what I mean when I say art. And then what do I mean when I say product vision? Um, so in this context, given that we're talking, um, this is for product school and um, it's very much in the context of how to develop products um, with your teams um, cross-functionally and deliver this amazing user experience. Um, in that context, product vision is really about um, defining this this idea of like, what is an ideal state that can really rally um, your team and get very uh, people very excited? Um, and what is something that could really appeal to the user and leave a lasting impression? Um, something that kind of speaking to that art piece is like, it's really about the experience and the feelings that um, the user is experiencing as they're um, moving through your product. And so product vision is something that you're aiming towards. Um, it's something that can get both the users and the team very excited um, about marching towards that, um, that future. Um, and then we'll talk later about like how to translate that vision um, into kind of more concrete steps like the, the tactics that you can use. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing some specific examples, um, not all of them in a tech context, um, but hopefully illustrating how, uh, how art translates into kind of concrete user experiences. Uh, here's a quote from Frank Lloyd Wright, where space is the breath of art. So being able to find the space uh, and to, um, to set set that time and a uh, blank canvas to, to really think about like, what is the ideal? Um, what is the vision that I want to convey to um, uh, those who are experiencing the, the product or the, um, the art that uh, I've created? Uh, that's really important. So um, I'll, I'll illustrate that a little bit more in some of these examples. Uh, so yeah, this one is Zaha Hadid. She uh, was a uh, an amazing architect, um, very futuristic. And so um, I'm showing here some of these concepts that she draws at the start of um, an architectural project. So um, so in these examples, you'll see that um, she'll really think about like uh, from from a certain angle, like how how does she want this project to um, kind of uh, like what kind of impression does she want it to leave, right? So um, here, this is like a, a building that's set on a mountainside. Um, and you can see like, she's thinking about um, how does it fit into that, that mountain? Like, how will it look from this angle? Um, and what is, uh, what is that um, 
kind of impression, that first impression that it's leaving with the users um, on the left side kind of in daylight and then on the right side at night. Um, so she's really going for like this sleek futuristic look, um, just kind of um, very mysterious and kind of jutting into the into this ridge over here. Um, so just really, really cool emphasis on the lines, really thinking about like um, when she actually moves into more, more concrete steps, like trying to still capture a lot of that, um, that impression that is um, just really sleek and minimal and um, very futuristic. So same on the right, she's thinking about like at night, you know, here's, um, there's some glass and there's reflections and there might be um, moments to add lighting to kind of accentuate this kind of futuristic spaceship feeling. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's kind of uh, what I mean, like, when you're thinking about creating the space, it's like, uh, right here, she hasn't gone into details around like, how exactly does this building need to get built or what materials, but it's about like, this initial impression and what are what is the visual language um, going to be to um, to really be able to leave that impression in the users um, in the user's mind. So uh, here's another example. She's here she's like exploring um, how these curves kind of manifest and um, exploring just like um, just like, you know, here's one line, but how does it iterate over time and how does it all connect? And what are some cool ways to, to connect these lines? Um, later, she can translate it into a building, um, some components of a building. Um, but for right now, she's like really thinking about like, um, how does this curve express itself and how does it like make the user really feel, um, which is pretty cool. And it's, um, it's more about this, this very specific idea rather than thinking again about like, how exactly do I have to build this out in this exact moment? Um, so then when she actually translates it into her projects, then she can think about like, oh, like in this moment when a user um, or, you know, when this person walks into this auditorium, um, I have a moment to like really emphasize these curved lines. Uh, for example, like the ones that she was drawing in the previous example. Um, so then she can think about like, uh, in this moment when she when a user is walking into the auditorium, that is very much like a planned experience. Um, and every time someone walks in there, they'll see this. Um, and then the, the lighting is further kind of emphasizing the curves and um, further bringing out that impression that she previously was iterating on. Um, similarly, on the right side, thinking about like from certain angles, how how's the building going to look? Um, and, and being able to kind of really plan that out um, because especially with architecture, um, you can imagine like there's going to be entrances and like ways to um, walk through the building. And so um, you can really find those moments where, um, where uh, those initial drawings can really make sense and be applied to kind of convey that, that feeling of like futurism or like that kind of spaceship feeling. Um, so similarly with like, uh, like software design, like when you're designing um, or building for a user experience, you can also think about like, what are those moments um, to really wow the user and like bring that product vision to life and really convey this, um, this image of like uh, what, what a product could be or like how your life can be really like when you're designing those um, those magical user experiences it's like it's leaving the user with a certain feeling um, and and kind of a lasting impression and that's that's often like um, what then the user associates with the product and brings them uh, brings them back because they've associated a certain experience with a very positive feeling um, and a positive perspective on their life. Uh, so I really like this quote. Um, this is by this Japanese architect called Tada Ando. So he says, no building lasts forever, but the impressions they create can last forever in the soul. Um, so it's again kind of speaking to that point where um, even though um, the it's there's the functional element of a building or a product, um, but there's also this lasting impression that happens at certain moments where um, it really leaves this lasting feeling. And, and then that's kind of what lingers and feels um, subconsciously like very powerful. 
Um, and so it's important to think about like wh when are the moments that you can take that um, take those opportunities to create those lasting impressions, even in a digital product. Because even though um, even while building an app or a website, um, when the user is experiencing it, um, it's very much tangible, very real. Um, so I'll talk some give some more examples here. Um, these are some concept drawings that Tadao Ando drew for a museum. Um, so you can see again, like he's starting from more of a blank canvas. He already knows that like roughly like this is the site that he's going to build this museum onto. Um, but he first starts with these rough sketches where it's like, you know, from this certain angle as like far away when approaching the building or like looking at the building um, set in these mountains, like what is the feeling that uh, that he wants to create for the user. Um, and so here it's like, you know, it's very much like sloping along with the mountains. Um, and so kind of uh, mirroring elements of like the landscape itself, um, which is really cool and kind of creates this like serene kind of blended in um, experience. Uh, so he planned that out with these sketches early on. And then um, he's also thinking about like, uh, from other angles, like how does the how does this building look from um, certain angles? Like this one is more like as you're approaching the building more close up. Like how does it look? Um, yeah, and so that's that's how he starts with uh, more of this kind of blank canvas approach, where he's thinking about like different angles when the user is going to likely be seeing the building um, and making sure that those are really strong and really powerful. Um, and once he's identified some of those moments, um, then he uh, moves into like, you know, concrete implementation, preserving some of a lot of those moments that he planned out early on. Um, and then when it manifests as the building, you'll see that like, it still maintains a lot of that initial vision of like, this building is like sloping with the with the mountainside and it's really like um, blending in in a very serene way. Um, so here are some more views that he planned out for um, this museum where you can see like he's thinking about um, again more moments that um, leave a lasting impression. Um, this one is like uh, thinking about the stairs and and how um, kind of how it's like very geometrically and rhythmically spaced out to further kind of enhance that feeling of like um, a slowly rising um, kind of gradient to match the mountainside um, and those those kind of geometric um, staircases to kind of further create that rhythm of like the peacefulness um, and on the right side like some curves and um, thinking about the lighting and how the users will enter through this courtyard um, so yeah, it's all very planned out. So um, here's another example. Um, here's an example up from a, a fashion designer. Um, so I'll, I'll again kind of talk about like on the left side here is this um, this this show for their um, their designs. And um, again, they have less constraints here because they're only making this specific piece once for this show. It doesn't have to go into mass production, but they're doing it so that um they they have less constraints but they can articulate this this vision or this concept um so here on the left it's like there's graffiti and there's um there's kind of vinyl that's kind of um hinting at like a, a vintage kind of nostalgic aspect um and then when they actually translate this idea into what um the user can actually purchase and consume for themselves um it becomes you know, there's more real world constraints, but it still maintains uh, some of that initial concept again. So, yeah, so it's again, it's kind of showing like um, moving from less constraints to more constraints over time, but still hinting at that initial vision. Um, and I think that that really ties into like the product development cycle as well, because you're thinking about um, how can you transport the user into like, like showing them what um, what their life could be. Um, and then in practice, like as they're experiencing your digital product, they might not be experiencing all of that vision um, all at once. Uh, it might be uh, it might be built out over time, but um, it's still capturing elements uh, of that more grand vision. 
So here are just a few more examples translating from like these um, kind of uh, show concepts into what can be purchased. Um, and again, and so now I'll talk about like two, you know, very well known examples in more of um, the specific like software development um, realm. So uh, Uber is of course very well known, very popular. Um, and I think what was interesting about Uber is that like in terms of in terms of the vision, of course, there's like the the vision of like making transportation like running water. Um, but I think it started out also um, as thinking about like the user journey of um, trying to call a taxi, but um, having that exper experience being like really terrible and unreliable. And then so then there's this um, this idea of like what if um, what if in an ideal state every user could just have their own black car who that is like constantly available. It's like this ultra VIP service. And every time you need it, your black car just shows up um, and is there for you. Um, and so in that state, uh, the user experience is like very powerful. Um, it's very, um, very premium. And the user would feel really great about using that product. Um, and so then translating that to um, Uber as an app, um, they're still able to accomplish a lot of that um, by uh, having that uh, supply of drivers that is um, generally readily available near you um, at a very affordable, uh, relatively affordable price. Um, and uh, and then there's elements of the branding where it's like the the company brand is like you know very dark and or it's like it started out as like um, more like uh, black colors to kind of hint at that vision of like um, the very like powerful and premium kind of uh, idea of what um, what they want to leave users with. Um, and then of course it has to be distilled into something that is buildable. Uh, it's not actually um, one black car per user. There's some um, practical constraints. Um, but yeah, it's kind of thinking about like, what is that, what is that um, feeling that they want to leave the users with every time they're using the app, um, uh, given some of those practical considerations. And so similarly with Airbnb, um, as the name uh, suggests, it's, um, it's kind of trying to hint at this idea of like a very warm and cozy, like traveling experience where um, instead of uh, living in a hotel, you're living in someone's home, uh, no matter where in the world you're traveling, um, you're being cared for by your host, um, and, and sometimes they serve you food, um, but not necessarily. Uh, but yeah, it's like the, the experience is also hinting at that kind of very cozy bed and breakfast um, experience, although in practice, uh, it may not always translate uh, one to one, um, but it's it's hinting at that vision, uh, and so that kind of uh, vision is articulated throughout the experience, where um, the people that you're renting your Airbnb from are called the hosts um, instead of like you know property managers or something like that. Um, but that's how you kind of take that product vision and the the feelings that you want the user to. Um, be left with and transfer that into, into that digital experience. So then putting it into practice, um, today I'm not going to talk too much about that. It's more about kind of um, bringing in some examples around like art and product vision and taking that into like a practical digital experience. But um, at a high level, um, the way you would go about doing this is uh, you would first think about the user journey um, you would find those moments of opportunity, uh, those pain points, because when you find those opportunities, then um, there's a lot more room to uh, design something way better or hint at something that could be a lot better versus trying to um, choose something that is already really great in the user's experience and trying to enhance that. Um, so once you identify those moments, then you think about the vision around like for those moments of opportunity, like 
how would the users really want to feel in those moments? Um, like, what would the ideal be? So with the Uber example, it's like um, when a user is like unable to even call a cab reliably when they need it most, um, what if instead they could just call their black car and then it would just show up? Uh, so it's thinking about, about kind of that, that gap and thinking about like, what is the ideal in that state? Um, what do you want the users to feel in that moment? Um, and then once you have that ideal vision, then you translate it to the experience um, given, given some practical constraints around like um, release timing and budget and how big the team is and, and a variety of other uh, constraints. But then you, um, you take that vision and um, make sure that it is um, kind of consistent and it's consistently um, being hinted at throughout the experience, whether it's through um, branding or copy or marketing um, and making sure that um, as the user is traversing through the product, that there's different touch points that really um, hint cons consistently at the vision, um, even though you may not be providing like 100% of that immediately. Um, yeah, and so, so that's really it. I would love to hear feedback uh, or, you know, hear your thoughts on all of this. Um, you know, we'll have, happily hear um, any alternative perspectives on the role of art and product vision in product development. Um, I know in practice as product managers, we are um, often uh, working with a lot of constraints. So uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely kind of tricky to figure out the right moments to, to bring this into the development cycle. But yeah, we'd love to hear what you think. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the talk. <laughs>